Of all the micro brands I've featured on this channel, Boulder has to be up there with the best received by you guys. I covered their Venture Field Watch back in 2020 and was impressed with the specifications and compact performance, which included a titanium case, high water resistance, and an automatic movement. Unfortunately, I'm yet to cover them since. You see, at the time of recording, they yet to release anything sleeker than the aforementioned Venture, as most of their range uses the same solid but bulbous case style, with a few outliers boasting bulkier proportions. As such, I've been hesitant to release a follow-up video, as I'd be retreading a lot of old ground. Well, I may have found such a follow-up from a different brand entirely. I say entirely, but there's a bit of a catch. RZE, formerly Riser, is a microbrand founded by Travis Tan, one of the original co-founders of Boulder. As such, this new brand has more experience than first impressions would have you believe. Considering that, how does his second bite of the cherry stack up? Well, I didn't have to wait long to find out, as they'd already sent me a watch before making contact via email. Unfortunately, some ridiculous Dutch and African microbrands have got in the way, but now I finally have time to fit this one in. For a retail price of around £300, is this going to be a fan favourite like his previous project, or will it receive similar condemnation to other up-and-comers that I've annihilated recently? I guess there's only one way to find out. The watch arrived in a very long box that concealed a plush leatherette pouch within. This model, called the Resolute, was their very first release, though they've subsequently gone on to release a couple more. The Boulder DNA is on full show here, with a comparable list of specifications, starting with the titanium case. While a similar colour to the Venture, this one takes a far different approach, with a multifaceted angular profile that creates a much more aggressive look. It retains a more standard 3 o'clock position threaded crown, as well as a screwed rear for reliable water performance. 100 meters is the advertised resistance here, which isn't as high as that on the boulder, though it's sufficient for the vast majority of users and isn't of major concern. The whole case is brushed, so isn't particularly complex. However, it has been completed to a good standard with precise edges and a mattified layer that helps it look consistently good even in lamentable lighting conditions. This proprietary ultra hex coating seems to perform well against scratches, better than standard titanium and trading blows with Citizen's famed super titanium. The 1200 Vickers hardness rating actually puts the Resolute slightly above the reported 1000 rating of the latter, though for most people, the difference between the two will be near indistinguishable. Nevertheless, the proportions here are more wearable than most of Citizen's oversized offerings, with a 46.6mm lug-to-lug, a thickness of 11.6mm, and a width of around 40mm, depending on where you measure. You'll notice that like the Casio lineage, there are bulges on each side to bulk up the watch a bit, but despite that, this isn't a large watch, and is consequently better suited to average and small wrist sizes. Thanks to the inherent properties of this material, the watch is extremely comfortable. At just 90 grams in this configuration, you can barely feel it on the wrist, and it doesn't shift around much during usage, which is a boon. A point of contention for me is the bracelet. This can be had for a premium of £50 when purchasing the watch, or around £80 individually. And while the quality is good, I do have a couple of bugbears. Primarily, I don't think it integrates particularly well with the case. While I wouldn't expect a seamless transition at this price point, in natural light, the majority of the bracelet does appear to be a slightly different tone of grey, apart from the clasp which does match properly. The end links don't sit flush with the case either, which is a shame. Also, while the double fold-over mechanism is very secure, it is quite stiff and isn't the friendliest to your fingertips during operation. That being said, they didn't cut corners elsewhere, as it does have solid links throughout, along with a milled clasp and plentiful micro-adjustment holes for the perfect fit. I also enjoy the taper down to 16mm, which prevents it from feeling clunky on the wrist. Overall, I'm split on whether or not it's worth saving the money and opting for a fabric strap instead. Whichever route you take, you'll be glad to know that neither pass beneath the case, which was a major frustration with the already chunky boulder, and the lugs are drilled, allowing for easy strap changes. Atop this RZE sits a sapphire crystal, which boasts a very effective, super anti-reflective coating on the inside. True to the name, this performs noticeably better than that in the more expensive Casio Oceanus that I recently reviewed, allowing for better visuals, which is ever more important on a monochrome watch like this one. Indeed, the grey version that they sent me isn't the most flashy, with a muted grey colour scheme that houses a highly textured fume dial, which graduates to a darker tone towards the circumference. It's somewhat akin to a rock face, and looks more visually interesting than the likes of the Venture, which was somewhat basic. This added depth extends to the markers and date window. The latter in particular is very well considered, with a grey wheel and surround that look right at home within the matching dial and chapter ring. 
The Resolute was formerly available in green, blue and red, though only black and white appear to remain as purchasable alternatives to this one. While I like the applied indices and the strong luminescence they bring to the table, their slimminess will always pose a risk to the quality control of the piece, it being more difficult to align narrow sticks versus more forgiving wider shapes. Unfortunately, that very issue has reared its head here, as three markers are misaligned, including the most prominent double index at 12 o'clock. They're not miles off, but if I bought this, I'd try and exchange it for a different unit to see if I had better luck. Aside from that, they have a pleasing off-white tinge that contrasts well with the pure white dots on the outside of them, and the two-tone sticks used at each 90 degree interval help to prevent them from looking generic or boring. If you took one of these markers and stretched it out, you'd have the handset. These baton hands are fairly run of the mill, as is the second hand that bobs around the perimeter. They perfectly match the markers, maybe they could have done with being a little bit wider. The absence of text here is pleasing, with some limited wording below center presented in an inoffensive squared font that suits the blocky aesthetic. Given the bold profile of it, I think the logo icon could benefit from being in 3D or at least two-tone like that seen on the website to add an extra dimension and to display itself more confidently. It's not often you see a wristwatch logo that's height exceeds its width, and at present, it looks a little like the unusual London 2012 Olympics logo when used in isolation. Unsurprisingly, this Resolute is powered by the tremendously popular Seiko NH35A automatic movement, which operates at the usual 21,600 beats per hour. This means it'll be easy to service and maintain, but won't be the smoothest sweeping hand out there. While I like the watch, it lacks a unique, kick-ass component that makes me want to reach for it over other options in my collection. They're set to release a new version of this Resolute in mid-March, so it'll be interesting to see what alterations they've made to this already competent tool watch. Perhaps that one will do a better job of stimulating my senses. If you want to take a look at two other similar watches that I've reviewed before, click on the videos on screen now and make sure you subscribe for more.